firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have heard and under. We are heartily sorry and repent of all of our sins. We have served our Lord Jesus Christ today. Forgive us of all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, we forgive us all who truly repent, have mercy and pardon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And he is to his people on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and bless the us, you are seated in the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, forgive the love of our Lord. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good things without you, grant us the help of your grace. That in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to the first reading.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out from the land, a man in the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, as he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me, for Jesus has commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it has seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now, there, on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told him in the city and in the country. Then the people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man for whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen him told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, but they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man who proved the demons had gone begged him that he might with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of now, anyone know what these are? Lightsabers, yes, the lightsaber. And who uses lightsabers? Well, where do we find them? What series of stories have we built into the book? Star Wars. So if you don't know the Star Wars uh, episodes, what was it? Surely you didn't love it, but there's many of them. Who in the Star Wars films used the lightsabers? The Jedi. The Jedi Knights used the lightsabers, don't they? And they harnessed what's called the Force, which in the Star Wars universe kind of underpins everything, and they harnessed it for good. But the Jedi Knights are not the only ones to use lightsabers. If you know the films, you know them. Because the Jedi's are the goodies, aren't they? They're the goody knights. They fight on the side of, of the light. They fight on the side of the good, the, the good side, the light side of the force. But if you know the story, it's the other side, the dark side. The dark side of the force also have knights. And they're called the Sith. The Sith knights, they're all called Dark something. And the most famous of those is Dark Darth Vader, of course, yes. Darth Vader, um, the baddie, and he's, he's actually a sick boy, he's not the only one, but there's other ones as well. And uh, this light, I believe, from this uh, particular lightsaber, shows that it belongs to the sick boy, Darth Sidious. Okay, so this is Darth Sidious' lightsaber. And the Sith, the baddies, harness the force, but they harness it, not like the Jedi's, but in a good way, they harness it in a bad way. In a, in a destructive way. They give an in, if you like, to the dark side of the force. And this is what the dark side of the force is described as in a particular manner. But beware of the dark side. Anger, fear, aggression. The dark side of the force are they easily made to flow. If once you start down the dark path, dominate your destiny, consume you, it was, as said by Master Yoda, <laughs> yes, in my imperfect impersonation. <laughs> but once you start down the dark path, forever <coughs> it will dominate your destiny, consume you, it will. Of 
because that's um, lifted from, as I was uh, researching uh, the, the, the dark side of uh, how the um, Star Wars uh, information website, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, does, and this, that describes the dark side as like this. It's happening to the dark side to indulge in more emotions, such as passion, anger, and hatred. The dark side is greed, the fear of change, and the inability to let go. By holding on to things, what became angry and hateful, which in turn led to suffering. And those who were unable to conquer their dark side were devoured by it. And he also says this, the dark side uh, would have to be continually overcome by sentiments to walk in the path of the light. The dark side, it's important, the dark side was no more powerful than the light side, but it was easier. Albeit destructive, an easier but destructive path. And failure to resist the temptation of darkness would allow the dark side to dominate one's destiny, although redemption was always a possibility. The dark side isn't stronger, but it's easier. But we don't turn in terms of dark side and light side in our life, although we might think that that has a relevance in those things which lead to health and to happiness, to build things up, to make life better. And there are also things which in our world lead to destruction and uh, unhappiness, and things of which nothing good could come. So I'll just put these down here. Because I think today's story, the healing of that strange story of the um, healing of the, what's called the ghost in the pneumonia, the man with many demons, is a story, in a sense, about overcoming the dark side of life with goodness and the things that will bring healing. It's a story, ultimately, of redemption. We don't talk in our society now, we don't believe in, in at least most of us don't believe in demons uh, that, that possess people. But people who, people are mindful increasingly so of mental health, the importance of good mental health. We're aware of um, mental illnesses and we're aware of pressures <laughs> which can lead to bad uh, mental health. And also we can be nice with things which can lead to well-being. We might not talk we aren't actually believing in demons possessing people, but people do talk in terms of having kind of inner demons of anxiety, of depression, or loneliness, or fear, or lack of self-confidence. We might not really believe that these are spiritual kind of demons, but we do talk of them in those terms. We can talk about the importance of having a good uh, balance in our life. We can talk about things which can lead to, 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 to mental health as opposed to bad uh, mental health. And I think this story uh, of this healing of someone who was clearly, or the people didn't understand about mental health in those days, but someone who was clearly um, possessed in life by things which were destroying and that healing of that person is a story which is just as resonant in our world today, even though we might not talk in terms of demons, just as we don't talk in terms of uh, the force, the dark side of the force, but really the dark part, I think, is the same thing. In the story of um, Star Wars, Anakin Skywalker, um, starts off um, the story of Anakin or part one, you know, I'm going to look at it from Star Wars folks. Starts off wanting uh, to be a Jedi, wants to be trained, he wants to stay on the light side, but because of life events, his, the loss of his mother, his wife, his sister, is someone who eventually is consumed by the dark side. And with me, in case you've not seen him, I won't be to any spoilers, but he becomes sort of possessed by the dark side and he becomes one of the first if not the best known uh, of the Sith Lords. I was saying, oh, what I am your father. He's, 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 he's a part of his, his story. But he's someone who 
you is a man of himself. To his then follow the path of health and well-being, to be consumed literally by, by those dark forces, which are just as real, I think, in our own world today, as they are in the Star Wars universe, but as they were in Jesus' time. One way of looking at this is this strange story to try and understand in our own terms of the, um, the, the healing of the pneumoniac of the man that was healed, is to think of it as a story of redemption in terms of uh, it echoes, it's a lot of echoes in, in uh, baptism and uh, 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 christening. The, the place where Jesus went, Gerasene, was, was outside the area So this man was, was so much an outsider. He was an outsider of the kid because he wasn't a, a, a Jewish person. He didn't share the same faith as Jesus. He was an outsider of the living among pigs, which were the kind of worst unclean animal that, that people in Jesus' time could imagine. And he was an outsider because he was clearly someone who had um, been, been, been taken over by bad mental health. But by an echo of, in our baptism service, we say um, we, we turn away from sin, we reject the devil, we turn to Christ, and we symbolize that by water. So this, this, this man undergoes that process, and literally water comes into him. Water is what, what takes away those demons. So it's a story that ends with the man sitting at Jesus' feet, learning from him as a disciple which in a sense is all that any of us could ever wish for on our own Christian journey is to simply sit at Jesus' feet, be with Jesus and learn from him. So it's a scene, it's a story of healing, it's a story of redemption. And that story of healing and redemption is, I think, just as powerful, in fact, probably more powerful in our own day because we do, we, we're able to understand in, in a clearer way the things that lead to um, a, a, a state of being un, unwell in our, own, in our own minds. And it's a story that shows that Jesus is more powerful than any of those disruptive forces that we can encounter in our lives. And if our wish is just to simply to sit at Jesus' feet, then we can be healed in just the same way. We can follow the path of light. We can be rescued. We can be taken away. We can be redeemed the path of darkness. And that's just as powerful now, I believe, today, as it was in Jesus' day, or indeed in a galaxy far, far away.
to be a member together in the body of Christ, we thank God that is the power of his love. She is more powerful than any we can encounter in our lives. So we ask God to deepen our own personal commitment to that life-giving love which Jesus holds out to us and offers to us, that it may flow through the church, through us, and out into the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray that God will direct and further all international discussions so that they lead to peace, goodwill, and mutual understanding. We continue to pray for all whose lives have been affected and ruined by the conflict in Ukraine. We pray for God's peace and justice to reign in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you will come make your home in us, in our families, in our homes, in our places of work, in our local community, in our neighbourhoods, that our characters may be forged for good by the power of your life within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray that God will bring healing Homeless to all who are ill, peace to the anxious, courage to the fearful, and rest to the weary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that God will bring everlasting peace to all those who have died, that they may now know the joy of being invited to God's heavenly banquet. And we thank God for all who are invited to share our life giving love. Pray that we will always respond to Jesus is reaching out to us and that we may be made worthy of all that God has promised to us and offered to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ.
prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. 